In today's episode, I'm pleased to sit down with an old friend and colleague, someone I've worked with on seminars, rub shoulders with at trade shows. Our guest today is not your typical entrepreneur. In fact, his sense of humor is something that has been remarked on many times over the years. But after all, doesn't that make sense? If we can't enjoy what we do and laugh every day, well, what's the point? Who's our guest today? It is Rob Onspach. Hello, Rob. How you doing? <laughs> doing good. good. I see you combed your hair for me. Good. I did. You know, I, it was not something I wanted to do. I just can't take that negativity. Yeah. This is the typical entrepreneurial spirit. Rob just wants to do what he wants to do. Is that right? That's always how it's been. Yeah. All right. Um, you look a little worn out. Did you take a vacation recently? <laughs> I did take a vacation. And now I need a vacation from that vacation. Uh, yeah. Went to Europe for two years, two years, two, two years. Welcome back. <laughs> like two years. Uh, yeah, we well, went to France and uh, Southern France took my, my mom's or my mother-in-law to uh, Southern France for her 80th birthday. And, and uh, we visited uh, Toulouse, Nice, Ez, um Lourdes. I mean, we were all over southern France, and it was it was nice. But we logged fifty five miles of walking in thirteen days. That's some exercise. So now you can have pizza, burgers, whatever you want for a little while till it catches up. I came up. back and I actually had a burger, and I thought, "Oh, this is a great tasting burger." Yeah, but my stomach wasn't ready for it because of all the French food I was eating. Well, I'm glad you got away because yeah. every time you travel like that, there are delays, airport issues free overnights maybe uh, where you weren't expecting it so ever wished your estimates had a spell check estimators meet the actionable exactimate profile just like spell check catches typos the actionable profile catches estimate errors before they become costly mistakes less back and forth with your adjuster less headaches no more mistakes no more missed line items try the actionable profile today your spell check for estimates But Rob, let's get into it. I'd love it if you would just tell us a little bit about yourself. Everyone watching, but maybe a couple of people know who you are. So for those that don't know Rob on Spock, who are you? What have you done? What are you doing? Well, I was a former carpet cleaning owner or an owner of a carpet cleaning business for 19 years. Started out in 1995. Thought I knew everything about cleaning because I had worked for other companies. And... Uh, discovered very fast that I didn't know anything. And so, you know, through through years of learning marketing, through taking your courses, uh, from becoming a master textile cleaner, I discovered that, uh, you know, 19 years was too much. <laughs> so I started uh, teaching other carpet cleaners how to market. And then soon that that morphed into teaching doctors and lawyers and everyone else how to market and then started writing books on everything. <clears throat> so, you know, 19 years in the, in the cleaning business. And then uh, with Unspuck Media, now it's 23 years and there was some overlap, but uh, you know, I enjoy what I do. And, and it's, it's not that <clears throat> carpet cleaning was, um, not something that I thought I'd be in for a short time. I mean, my wife's like, you, know, you were in it for 19 years. That's 18 years too long. She just, she always thought that, uh, I mean, I don't even clean my own house. So why would I <laughs> pay to get paid to clean someone else's? But, um, you know, I, I learned so many things. And I think when I look back, I'm thinking, you know, I'm fortunate that, that I had that business because it taught me how to deal with clients better. Um, it, it taught me how to respect people better. Um, and, 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 you know, I was always invited into people's homes and the majority of my clients were women. And so when you have to change how you, I, I guess, operate, you know, a lot of women don't always like sarcasm. So I, I had to temper that side of me for a long time you know but when i created on spot media that's become my brand that's become who i am 
and and people appreciate that and and i wrote i even wrote a whole series of books the rob versus series and it's all on sarcasm and so you know i i think that yes we need to be able to work a company or work for a company that helps us temper who we are because it also shapes who we are or who we want to be and so that that was me in a nutshell I kind of wondered about that sarcasm bit because on social media, I think even in your own title, you say you're Mr. Sarcasm. So doesn't work always in a customer's home. You have to kind of know how to temper that as, as you did so well. But you wrote books, you said. Now, I've written stuff. I've never written books. How many books? You'd be good at it. I don't have the time, well, but... you know, it, it started out in, in uh, 2013. I wrote a, a book about social media called Share, and it was the easiest social media book you'll ever read. And um, that has morphed over the last 12 years. Well, it'll be 12 years in February of 2025. And uh, that number will be 50 books. 50? 50 books in 12 years. Now, some of them, some of them so are mine. Do you, does some your wife write, support you because you're writing books? What's that? Does your wife support you because you're writing books? No. <laughs> or do they support you, those books? Well, the books help support our lifestyle, Good. help support, uh, you know, taking these trips to, to everywhere. <clears throat> but, you know, a lot, of, and, and I think that the, the misnomer here is, is that people think that if you write books, you're going to be a millionaire. I'm probably a million dollars short of that goal. What they do is they help build your authority and what, you know, whatever your niche is. And so, you know, I, I help entrepreneurs tell their stories through books. And so they get to have that authority. They get to showcase who they are. Instead of handing out business cards, you hand out books. And so when it comes time to people deciding who they should use, do they use a person that just gave them a business card or do they choose the person who has a book that's answered all their questions and, and you know, their life stories in that book that they can trust them better. You decided carpet cleaning was your career path as an entrepreneur. 19, year, 19 years you spent doing that. I'm not sure if I decided it. It was right. something I was good at and Why? Uh, thought I was good at because I had worked for a company prior to starting my own. And the entrepreneur in you said, and every well, yeah, and every month I was winning these sales contests, and I'm thinking, oh, I can do this on my own and take all the money, and not have to split it with anybody, except um, the government. <laughs> except for three years, I starved because I didn't understand the basics of marketing. Hmm. And so once I understood that I didn't have to be the cheapest, you know, company out there, that there was a lot of people out there that would rather spend a lot of money to have a better quality service. And so when I started tapping into that, you know, my, my, my company grew, um, you know, it, it, it just, I, I had more money and I was able to go from, you know, operating out of a, a small Astro van to having a, a big uh, extended GMC. And so now you have room for more equipment and then I bought another company out and used their equipment for a while. And um, but here's the thing is that, you know, after 19 years, I sold the business to somebody. Thinking that they could take it over, they would understand what I was doing. But they didn't keep my pricing. They, they operated on their same cheap pricing that they did for years not understanding my clients were willing to spend more and they went out of business within a year. So that, you know, that's it, probably a common tale in the industry, but that's, that's sad that happened. But when you build something that's worth something, whoever takes it over should do what Rob? Well, they should raise their prices. Continue on, right? Do this. Well, they should continue work. on. And, yeah. and if, if they're going to take over a business that's successful, at least, utilize the marketing that they've had in place for years to keep those clients coming back, which they didn't do. 
So, so you sold your company, you became what you would say, uh, entrepreneurial business coach. Would you, was that a fair title? At first? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if I'd, I'd say that at first I was, I was, all I wanted to do is help others with their marketing. And that kind of morphed into what I am now helping people with, you know, coaching them on, on their businesses, <clears throat> helping them with their marketing, with their legacy plan, with, with their books, their podcasts, and even their SEO and social media. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about legacy in detail in a minute, but I just want to get into this, Rob. So when you sold your company, you got into helping others, you were focused on carpet cleaning companies, your comfort zone, correct? Mm -hmm. it was. What, how did you find the reception of those business owners? Did they listen to you? Did they apply what you told them? Was it frustrating at times? It was it was frustrating because and, and and I'm not sure if there was a guru out there telling the carpet cleaners that, hey, you know, 300 hours is the max you should spend on marketing, because that just seemed like the resistance wall I was hitting all the time. And I knew that they needed to spend more, not to fill my pockets, but so that they could get a better marketing foundation created. But that was that was the the limit that I would get every time I, you know, a carpet cleaner would approach me. Well, Rob, I was told the limit was only 300 hours a month. I was told. And, and um, you know, it, it was it was weird because then I, I started bringing on lawyers and doctors as clients. And they're willing to spend 5,000, 6,000, 10,000 hours a month. And I thought, okay, why? Okay, maybe the, the lawyers and doctors have more money, but the carpet cleaners could spend a little bit more to get the same value that the doctors and lawyers were getting. But there was that resistance. I, I and I, I, I finally decided that you know maybe I just should serve the lawyers and doctors. Now I had a, a, a carpet cleaner for a long time that was a client of mine for about a decade. And she died last year. Mm. And um, her son took over. And <clears throat> I kept my prices very low for her because I knew that she was struggling. And her son took over when, when, her, when she died, her son took over. And the first thing he said was, I think your prices are too high and I don't want to continue. And I said, fine. Six months later, he was out of business. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't speak for the smartness of doctors and lawyers, but maybe their marketing plan is solid. And, and the return on investment is how you measure marketing, right? If you spend a dollar and get two in return or whatever formula you want, spend more. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and maybe they have deeper pockets. <clears throat> you know, and, and let's talk about ROI because, you know, for a long time, I thought the same. You know, you spend this, you get that. But as I've gotten older, I realize that with a legacy plan, sometimes the ROI doesn't make sense at first because we're thinking about the transactional history. We're thinking about the here and now, and we're not thinking about the long term. How many carpet cleaners think about what they're going to pass on to the next generation? The business that you're building, will your kids take over? Will the your grandkids' grandkids take over? And most of the answers are no. Law firms, you can see the, their, their progression. You know, they'll go from name to name to name to name. And some of these law firms are, you know, 100 years old. Why can't that be the same in the carpet cleaning industry? Good question for sure. But let's let's segue into our main theme here. Rob, and you touched on legacy and that at first in your career, didn't think about it too much. It means a lot to you now. In fact, that's no doubt reflected in the books you're writing. Because I imagine your books are not about how to clean carpet. No. No. Okay. We have enough of those books. I've written those kinds of books for my classes, but uh, definitely a good way to fall asleep at night if you want to need a sleep aid. Read my textbooks. But what inspired you to think about legacy, building a legacy, 
uh, whether as a company or as a individual, what is, what does that mean for those watching? Give us some solid advice to make this work for everybody. You know, when I when I wrote that first book, Share, I had no idea that I was I was going down this road of legacy. And the more books I started writing or or helping other people write their books, the theme of legacy kept coming up. And and I'm I'm producing five books right now. And I, I just wrote a whole book on legacy. But the other books that I'm I'm helping, one's for a lawyer, one is for a speaker who was a former Marine and now he's on the speaking circuit. And then one is from a company that actually got canceled by PayPal. And every single one of those books, they talk about legacy. And I thought, wow, you know, I, I should write my own book, which I sent you a copy. And, you know, for the, for years, I, I, I probably shied away from letting people know what my past was. I was a carpet cleaner turned marketer turned publisher because I, I, I didn't think that people cared. But the more I look at the legacy that that is me, everything that I learned came from cleaning carpet. You know? And now, as I get older, I'm 55, you're not the same. <laughs> I have to wonder, what am I leaving behind? Yes, my books, podcasts. What is the message that I want to give to the next generation? You know, who who am I serving now? You know, and I, I, I've written all these books, and that's great. And And each one is a different theme, and people can learn from. Why do we think about legacy? A lot of times people think, well, oh, legacy, I'm going to leave behind riches, millions of dollars, you know, estates, cars, you know. But that's not always the case. It's the knowledge that we pass to the next generation. And it was funny because on the side here, I have manuals that, that go back to my cleaning days. And those manuals teach me, you know, taught me how to clean better. Same with your magazine, same with your courses, same with, with everything that you've done in life. They teach that next generation how to do something that allows them to skip some of the steps that we had to go through. Now, will some of this be relevant in the future? I have no idea. You know, will social media and SEO be the same in, in 20 years? Probably not. But at least they can go back and read it and go, oh, you know, that's that's what happened back then. This is what I can learn to go forward. But I, I <clears throat> most people who start a business don't think about the legacy. You know, I've been an entrepreneur for 30 years. You know, what's my what what are people gonna think who I am? What was what is the story that they're gonna remember? You know, oh, he was just sarcastic. That, yeah, he was just an asshole. No, at least they can read the books and discover, yeah, I, I really was sarcastic. You know, <clears throat> but it's it's that uniqueness that I want people to understand. It's it's who you become. You know, and and <clears throat> every one of you that is a cleaner now, think about what you're going to leave behind. You know, I, I spent 20 years in the industry. A lot of you have spent more than that in the industry. Are you just going to leave a business behind? Are you going to sell it when it's time to retire? You know, what is that thing that you want people to know about you? And there's a lot of people that don't care. <clears throat> I get it. But I know that there's a few of you out there that really do care about, you know, the next generation. So good words, Rob. Appreciate that. So let's close with this. You, you gave some good advice for, for those watching that aren't sure how to do this, how to 
create a legacy, how to leave something good behind that they want to be remembered about. What would you tell them? Where do people, how do people change their thinking? What do they need to embrace? Thinking of a young entrepreneur, maybe 25 years old, starting out in business, and they're not thinking about this, as you mentioned. Maybe they don't care. They should care. What can they do now to make it real, this legacy? Well, you know, we talked about price. And, and I know that everybody wants to be of value to other people. You know, they want to keep their prices low, especially in this economy that we're living in. The problem is when your prices are too low, and I started out the same way. My slogan at the time was, we clean your carpet, not your wallet. I wanted people to realize that I was not expensive. But that almost made me bankrupt. And, and here's the problem is I don't want to be remembered as a statistic that went bankrupt. I want to be remembered as that, that person who had a business for 20, 30 years, gave it to a son, daughter, niece, nephew, whomever. And they, they, they grew it even better and bigger. And that's, that's the thing is that we have to, as entrepreneurs, make our prices high enough that we can have better equipment, that we can advertise, that we can ensure that what we're building today lasts tomorrow. And, and so if, if you're the cheapest guy out there, it's not going to happen. And, and, and that all you're going to do is work yourself to death. So do you want to do you want to create a business that that allows the business to grow, to expand, and and, and be taken over by by the next generation, or do you want to die a slow death that that really is is not what really an entrepreneur should think about? You know, and I and I think that was one of the motivating facts that I wanted something bigger and better something that that went on beyond me you know we, we all think about having a, a business and, and that's great let's start a business but you're planning roots every time you create a business you're planning roots and 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 being able to help the community being able to help other people being able to stay in business for 20 years that becomes your legacy so all those companies out there that are over 20 years old, 30 years old, 50 years old, congratulations. Now you have something of value. You have a legacy that you can pass on. Well, Rob, thank you for that. Inspirational. I feel like I need to start another company.